OK, the next thing you need to be able to do is to write the formula from the name. This is slightly trickier, but it, uh, as long as you learn the rules and practice a bit, you won't find it too difficult. The steps are these. First, you need to identify the ions that are involved. Uh, then you need to write out the ion formulae, including the charges on the ions. So let's start with an example. We'll start with magnesium bromide. Again, you might find it handy to have a periodic table on hand so that you can work out the charges on your ions. So the two ions that are involved here are magnesium and bromide. So first we work out the magnesium ion. We'll have the symbol Mg. You'll find it's in group number 2 and it's a metal, so it will be 2+. plus. Bromide, that comes from bromine, has the symbol Br. You'll find it's in group number 7, which means it gains one electron and becomes Br-. minus. OK, so that's step number 2. Step number three is we need to work out how many of each ion is needed for us to have a neutral compound. Remember, overall, that the ionic compound must have a charge of zero. Working out how many of each ion is needed can be done by trial and error. The idea is to find a common multiple. You're looking to multiply the positive and negative charges by a factor so that the total positive and the total negative charges are the same. So for instance, here we will go, we have a total positive charge of two plus and we have a total negative charge of 1 minus. Clearly, we need more negatives. So we're going to multiply the bromides by 2. We need two of those, which means that our final formula must be 1 magnesium for 2 bromides. However, there is a neat shortcut that I'm going to show you. Uh, for simple ones like this, you can probably do it just by inspection. But the crossover method does get useful uh, for slightly larger charges. So it works like this. You write out your two ions and you take the charge that's on the metal and you transfer that number down to, as the subscript for the anion and you take the charge of the anion and you make that the subscript of the cation. So what that means is that for us the magnesium, the charge on the bromide was 1 minus so we just have one magnesium and if there's just one of them you don't bother writing a 1. And for the bromide the magnesium had a charge of 2 plus, so we take the 2 down to the bromide, and that means we need two bromides. So you can see it gives us the same answer. This crossover method is good as a shortcut, but it doesn't really explain to you why it works. Um, keep in mind that what you're trying to do is balance up the charges so that the total negative is equal to the total positive. Let's try another example. Let's try and write the formula for calcium nitrate. First we work out the ion formulae. Calcium is the element calcium. It's in group 2, so it's going to have a charge of 2 plus. Nitrate is what, now don't get this confused with nitride, which is the nitrogen monatomic ion. Nitrate, with the A-T-E, that indicates that it's one of your polyatomic ions. You should remember that its formula is NO3 with a charge of 1 minus. OK, if we do the crossover method for this, the 2 is going to come down near the nitrate. The 1 is going to come down near the calcium, which is going to give us a formula of 1 calcium and 2 nitrates. Now, we can't just write NO3 2 like this. This makes no sense at all. What we need to indicate is that we need two whole nitrate ions. And the way we do that is to put them in brackets and to put a little 2 outside, which means two lots of everything that's inside the bracket. So that's our formula for calcium nitrate. Checking that it works by our sort of total charges method, we've got one calcium, that's a total positive charge of plus two. We've got two nitrates, each of those is minus one. So two times minus one equals minus two. And so we've got plus two and minus two and it cancels out nicely. One final example, aluminium oxide. So aluminium is one of our ions. It's in group three, so it has a charge of plus three. Uh, and oxygen is in group 6. That means it has to gain two electrons to get a full outer shell, which means that the oxide ion has a charge of minus 2. If we do the crossover method, we simply take the 3 down to the oxygen and the 2 down to the aluminium, and that gives us a formula of Al2O3. To check that that works in terms of charges, we've got uh, two aluminiums and each of them is 3 plus, which equals a total positive charge of plus 6. And we have three oxygens 
and each of those is minus 2, 3 times minus 2 is minus 6. So plus 6 and minus 6 cancel out and we have our neutral compound.